Today on BRS TV, we give the final update to the ULM tank trial series. We were going for ultra low maintenance. Did we achieve it? And can you? That's coming up. Hey, I'm Ryan with Beerus TV, where every week we do our best to help you guys enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. Today is the final update to the ULM series. By the end of this video, you will know which approaches worked and which didn't. Better yet, if your goal is an ultra low maintenance tank, how to achieve it. This series started about a year and a half ago, sparked by my own desire to have more manageable tanks in my life. And man, did I learn a lot in that time. Every time I think I got this hobby down, something new pops up and probably why I like it so much. So all that said, I'm not gonna cover every last element on each tank that worked and didn't, but rather just take what I learned and give you my approach on an ultra low maintenance tank. It's my belief that you can have a super easy long-term reef tank that doesn't take over your life. It's all in the approach. I'm gonna break this up into five components of how I'd personally approach a successful ULM or ultra low maintenance tank, starting with what should be the most obvious tank type. Certain tank types just are a lot less work than others. By far the easiest and most accommodating type has been the softy and polyp tank. Why is that? Well, this type of coral is just way more forgiving on a variety of fronts. The rapid growth of biomass tends to take up undesirable nutrients faster. The coral coverage leaves less room for pest growth. Maintaining chemistry is much easier. In this case, we're only dosing 20 milliliters a day of Tropic Marin's All for Reef one part. This is by far the simplest and easiest tank that I've ever set up. So to some degree, you have to ask yourself not what type of tank that you want, but also what is the type of tank that you're willing to commit the time to. If it's very limited time in the first couple years is the number one priority, I would say the softy and polyp tank is probably your best bet. The one caveat to that is now that it's fully grown out, these types of tanks do require some pruning or fragging to stay looking nice or they just get overgrown. Just something to keep in mind. That leads into the next type of ULM, the LPS tank. Well, overall work required to maintain an LPS tank isn't much different. I will say they're more appreciative of stability, particularly stable alkalinity. So the chemistry requirements are just a bit more pronounced. I think that it shows itself a bit more in testing and dosing adjustments. However, the trade-off here is the LPS corals just don't grow as fast. So the chances of it rapidly becoming an overgrown forest is just way lower, or at least won't happen for a very long time. Because of that, an LPS tank would actually be my number one pick for longer term ULM tanks after those first couple years. Moving on to the SPS ULM tanks, for those of you that were following this series, we actually shut down the SPS ULM, and I'd call that tank trial an interesting but failed approach. We ultimately replaced it with the BRS WWC Hybrid E170 SPS tank a matter of months ago. It wasn't intended to be this way, but I will say the hybrid method, which core is simple and stable, has actually produced a dramatically easier tank, much closer to a ULM than the original approach. In a year, this tank is gonna be one of the nicest tanks in the entire office, all based on a simple all-in-one E170. That said, this is my take on ULM SPS tanks. It's not that an SPS tank can't be lower maintenance, and there's some things that you can do to make it that way, but more so, if your mentality is, is I want an ultra low maintenance tank, you should really spend some time considering if an SPS tank is the right way to go, because for most people, it probably isn't. So this is why I believe that to be the case. SPS corals thrive on stability. The amount of time that you spend paying attention to an SPS tank doesn't just have a correlation with stability, growth, and coloration, but more so the amount of time you spend with an SPS tank has a direct causation to almost all of the desirable elements of the tank. I think the simplest way to put it is a well cared for SPS tank is synonymous with a successful SPS tank. However, well cared for is not synonymous with ultra low maintenance just because there's significantly more testing, adjusting, and a more watchful eye required for long-term successful SPS tanks. This is particularly true in the first couple of years. With the right system design and approach, it often does get easier as time goes on. So if you're still thinking SPS tank, the best way to think about this is there are ways I can approach this to reduce the maintenance. But if you're asking me for the best advice I can give, if ultra low maintenance is the number one priority, I'd make a decision now. What's more important to you long-term, a specific tank type, or a tank that meets your available time for it and make an informed decision that will lead to the best results. Moving on to the number two thing I learned about setting up a ULM is don't overthink the chemistry. The start of the ULM tank trial series was really founded on the potential to avoid one of the biggest components of maintenance, water changes. However, we tested it with cute and overly complex chemistry solutions. I'm just gonna throw all that rubbish in the trash on a new tank 
new tanks in the first critical years just have way higher success rates with regular water changes. I believe approaching ULM chemistry by definition means not making this an experiment tank like the BRS-160s or these three ULMs, but on your own tank taking the most proven pass with the highest possible success rates. So both on the LPS and Softy and Polyp tank, that's just dosing a single product with Tropic Marin all for reef. I believe the all for reef to be the only reliable one part option out there that addresses major, minor, and trace elements in a single bottle. And I can tell you it's actually scalable to an SPS tank because Zach's SPS dominant tank has been running on this for quite some time now. On my WWC BRS Hybrid E170, we're just running BRS Pharma two part with Tropic Marin's third part all dosed in equal amounts for some amount of minor and trace elements as well. This is more or less very similar to Tropic Marin's balling method, except way cheaper, effectively achieving the hybrids method of simple and stable. Outside of the one to three part, it's just regular water changes that maintains overall chemistry and elements to an acceptable degree. Super simple, super stable, and that's why it's producing the desired results and ultra low maintenance at the same time. One big thing here is all three tanks are on automatic water changes, so rather than spend all that effort testing and brain power avoiding water changes on a new tank, we just made the water changes easier. The Neptune Dose takes the water from a room probably 30 to 40 feet away and up 10 feet through the ceiling then back down. The only work is to refill the saltwater bin once a month or so. If there's one thing I came away from this experience with more than anything else, it's automatic water changes doesn't just drastically reduce the maintenance, but the automatic regularity of them increases the stability and ultimately the success rates and quality of results. It's a million miles from required, but I can tell you once you've implemented auto water changes, there's zero chance that you're going back to the old world. However, there are other ways to make water changes easier with the proper mixing station, pump driven hoses rather than buckets or siphons and similar approaches. My most important feedback of the day is rather than spend time avoiding water changes, my own time is better spent making them easier. That leads into the third ULM lesson, which is somewhat at odds with that. Equipment is actually not always the answer. The more complex you make the system, the more BS there is to deal with, failure points, and just mental load thinking about how all this works together. I can tell you building the SPS ULM was super fun because I'm a natural born gear junkie, but we put way too much gear on this tank. We overthought it and I absolutely attribute part of that as to why it didn't work out, but certainly why even if it succeeded, it still would have never been really ultra low maintenance. Again, the tank that replaced it is just that hybrid method all-in-one E170. It's both 100 times more successful, but also way less work as well. These little frags have only been here in a matter of months, but they're already thriving. All-in-one tanks like this one have no sump and no fancy approach to equipment. Just a couple of power heads with battery backups we added, a skimmer that came with it, a return pump that came with it, our BRS dosers, and a Neptune Apex controller used primarily just to make sure it's all working as intended and tell us the moment it isn't. This feels like the right amount of technology and balance of gear junkie versus simple and stable. The fourth part of sharing my approach to a ULM is related to bare bottoms and if they're an effective component of a ULM. I got mixed feelings on this one and I'll say that WWC Josh nailed it when he said a bare bottom is a lot harder in year one, but easier every year after that. Harder in the first year means it will take a lot longer to fully cycle the tank, start growing coralline, and be ready for corals. Bacterial blooms and similar challenges in year one are also more likely with a bare bottom tank. Honestly, I've had similar challenges in frag tank systems, and I just didn't put two and two together that it was the absence of sand that was why the frag tank systems were more challenging in that first year than my actual display reef tanks, which for aesthetics, all had sand. Okay, so why is it easier after year one? That's all related to the undeniable fact that unless you maintain the sand really well, the sand bed almost always essentially becomes the tank's litter box. In fact, the sand bed becomes an overflowing litter box full of organic waste that often never gets changed. If you wonder if that's the case in your tank, stir up the sand in a lower flow area and watch what comes out. We can all debate how bad that is in various approaches to keeping it clean or not, but I believe the accumulation of that waste in the tank can't be good and likely at least a component of that mysterious old tank syndrome. So my belief is best practice is to clean the sand bed as part of regular maintenance or just skip the sand entirely. As it relates to ULMs and if ultra low maintenance is really the goal, my best advice is skip the sand, the cleaning and related issues from the beginning and implement proper flow to keep the bottom clean. 
except year one might have some hiccups in the near term, but the long-term goals take priority. The fifth component to my ULM considerations kind of brings all of this home or combines some previous considerations. Simple tanks are just simple to take care of and often forces even more simple solutions. For that reason, I believe all-in-one tanks with a sump incorporated in the back of the tank are just the best option for ULMs. The most popular being Innovative Marines Nuvo and Red Sea E-Series. That opinion comes from not just the work that goes into my office tank, but also the Studio E-Series tanks, as well as the whole slew of E-170s in the BRS lab. From everyone who takes care of these tanks, there's universal agreement here at BRS that these take the least amount of work to maintain. There are just fewer things to go wrong, and the simple design pays off. In fact, the simple design just doesn't allow you to overcomplicate it. I think I can actually summarize all five of these ULM components into a single sentence. I believe the best path to a true long-term multi-year ULM is an LPS-focused all-in-one tank with automatic water changes and a simple approach to chemistry with Tropic Marin's All for Reef one part or more affordable BRS two part pharma. This is just all it takes to succeed and keeping it simple keeps it low maintenance. For those of you who haven't seen hints of this yet, very soon we have a brand new series coming out, this time installing what amounts to be my dream tank in my own house, hopefully also inviting some of the industry thought leaders to join in on the conversation as well. This time skipping some of the debate and just sharing that when it comes to it, how I'm gonna personally approach all the challenges of installing a large tank in my house. If you wanna see that, hit the notification bell next to that subscribe and see it the moment it comes out. Randy and I are talking ULMs live next week, so this time not as a whole approach, but various ways to make the tank easier to maintain. If you wanna see it, as well as ask us questions directly, that's the best time. Just hit that link to sign up to be notified the moment we go live.